Man, I, I'm so excited what God is doing. I feel the Lord moving. I feel Him working. I'm excited not just for this church. I'm excited for everybody here today. I'm starting a new series today, and uh, I'm excited about this. I've been so pumped up about it. I haven't preached for like a week and a half, man. So here's the deal. I won't agree with Ken, man. If you're hungry, go ahead and leave now because it's going to get hot in here, and it's going to get really going good. And, and I'm excited about what God's going to do. And uh, so I, I just, man, I want to thank you, first of all, for being a church that just loves God. Man, I am, the, I am blessed. I am so blessed to be your pastor. And so um, I just want to say thank you for that. I, I'm going to title this series of sermons this whole month, the whole month of September. We're going to be preaching on UFC. UFC, there's, a, there's something out in the United States called UFC. It's the Ultimate Fighting Championship. It's where two men get in an octagon ring and they beat each other half to death. It's just the truth. There's a lot of blood. And how many of you know when you, when you fight for the Lord, there's going to be some blood shed? There's going to be some times you're going to get in the ring and you're going to get hit below the belt. There's going to be some times, man, when you get into the ring and you don't even feel like fighting, but you've got to fight. You know, the, the war has already been won, but the battle has just begun. We as Christians must get out of this mentality that we don't have to do anything. You've got to get out of the mentality that, man, I've come to church and I've done my thing and I put a check mark beside my name and everything's good with me. No, that's a lie. And you've got to believe what I'm saying I'm preaching today. I'm preaching today to leave a lasting impression on you. I pray that when I break this word down today, because it's deep in my spirit, it's a fire in my bones right now, and I can't wait to give you the word of God. I'm excited about it. How many of y'all come expecting something today? You're excited about what God's going to do in this house. I am. I'm excited about it. But I want to give you some scripture. I've got to set a platform. I've got to give you a backdrop of where I'm going, because all month we're going to be hearing a lot of things, man. It's going to be out of the tiger month. It's going to be... Uh, uh, Rocky month, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be put on the gloves month. And I don't know about you, I ain't afraid of the devil. Amen. I ain't afraid of that sucker. I am not afraid of the devil. He's already been defeated. 2,000 years ago on the cross, he was beat up, he was defeated, and we won 2,000 years ago. How many of y'all believe that? Because if you don't believe that, you're already messed up. You need to get born again. But let me show you this. In the Bible, if you have your Bible, say Amen. I learned a lesson, don't put the Bible on your, on your iPhone or whatever. Ken Freeman will call you out. <laughs> 1 Timothy chapter 6, I want to read you two verses here. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. If you're there, say amen. Listen to this. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. It says, but you. Turn to your neighbor and say, but you. Yeah, turn to your neighbor and say, God's talking to you. It says, but you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. I love verse 12. It says, not just to fight. It says, but when you fight, you fight the good fight. You fight the good fight of faith, of faith. You, you fight that fight with faith. Take hold, listen to me, take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you were made of a good confession in the presence of many. Listen to this. Take hold of the good fight, of the things that are eternal, that are going to last, that's forever. That person sitting beside you is eternal. They're going to last forever somewhere, either heaven or hell. Everybody here today, you're going to make a choice. Either you will be born again and go, go to heaven, which I'm praying and believing that's where we're at. Or you will deny Christ and you will burn in hell forevermore. I can't be no more plainer. It's either you're born again, going to heaven, or you're lost and dying and going to hell. The problem is, I believe we live in such a time in the 21st century, the Bible Belt, we take heaven for granted. We take our salvation for granted. We take all the things that are happening right now for granted. You are blessed to be in the house today. You are blessed to have clothes on your back. You are blessed to be praising God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You are blessed to be here today. Now turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. I love this. The Bible is just so good, so rich. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4 says, and listen to this, endure hardship. Boy, I could, I could stop right there. Endure it. Trouble's coming. I don't know what preacher got in front of you guys and said, hey, just say your ABCs, you'll be born again, and everything will be okay. That is a lie from the pits of hell. When you get born again, you have an enemy called Satan that hates you. Watch this. Endure hardship with us like a good what? Like a good soldier, not, a, not one that sits back and watch everybody get beat up all the time. You be a good soldier. You take a bullet for the team. You stand up and put your shoulders back and throw your head back and say, you know what? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm not going to have to sit back and take all this stuff because I'm a good soldier in the Lord's army of Jesus Christ. No one serving as a soldier. Listen to this. No one as a soldier serving. Watch this. Gets involved. Watch this. Gets involved. Where am I at? In civil, civilian affairs. In other words, listen, if you are a soldier and you're in the Lord's army and, man, you, you're battling these spiritual battles, listen to me, the world is lost. you gotta, you got to act like you're saved, amen? Watch this. Now turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I know it's a lot of Scripture. This is what God laid on my heart, and I'm going to give it to you. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Highlight this, underline this, whatever you got to do. A dirty Bible leads to a clean life. Verse 6, 2 Timothy chapter 4. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And and my time has come for my departure. Time's running out. See, we'll say amen to that. Time's running out. Your last day may be today, but are you acting like it's your last day? See, I live every day of my life like it's my last day. I live every moment of my life. I'm going to preach today, Beth, like today's my last sermon. I'm going to give it my all in all. I'm not going to ask for forgiveness because why? We're going to come straight from the B-I-B-L-E. I'm going to preach like a dying man today because I believe what the Word says. Because I'm being poured out. I'm like a drink offering. My day is today. It's not tomorrow. Today's my day, baby. Woo, I feel the Lord in the house right now. I don't know what y'all feel, but I feel. Watch this. He says, I, verse 7, I have fought a good fight. There it is again. When I fight, it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a good fight. Watch this. I fought a good fight. Hallelujah. I remember me and my brother got into a fight one time, and I'm 10 years older than him, so I knew I could whip him. And John says, you don't fight fair. I said, no, because you ain't going to whip me. So I was reaching, biting, pulling, tugging, whatever you got to do, baby. If it's there, I got it. Amen? But I'm going to fight a good fight. When I get into it with the devil, I'm going to fight a good fight. Watch this. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now watch this. Now there's in store for me a crown of righteousness. Why? Because I lived right. Righteous living is the right life. If you live right, you're going to have a righteous life. Amen. Y'all got that? For the crown of righteousness. For the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Let me give you some facts real quick about the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. The UFC began in 1993. Now, don't y'all listen to this. Hang with me. Say, I got you, preacher. It began in 1993. In 2011, the UFC made over $200 million for beating each other up. I'm sitting there going, what's up with the church today? Do we need to get an octagon boxing ring up and sell tickets to draw people in to get $200 million? When our God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords? He owns the cattle on the thousand hill and the gold under the hills. Amen? Y'all believe that? How many of y'all right now, you say, Brian, you can quit preaching right now and I believe the Bible. I believe the Word of God. You better, because I'm telling you, that's what you're going to be judged by. Listen to this. It's estimated over 60, 60 million people watched the UFC in 2011. That's one of them. The UFC is rated number seven in the world in the most watched sports going. Number seven, all sports, UFC. Over $200 million came in. Over 60 million people watched this program. See, we all know the battle's coming. Watch me now. Don't lose me. We all know the battle's coming. We all know that the devil is a liar. 
We all know that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We all know he's after us. We all know these things. In Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, it says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed. So what God spoke into my spirit is this. There's a weapon right now, watch this, being formed against you, but it shall not prosper. Y'all got me? Everything the devil does, hallelujah, God's got an answer. Everything coming against you right now, God has an an answer. Y'all believe that? No weapon forms against who? Say your name. That's a, you're speaking in tongues. Thank God he knows it. But no weapon formed against Brian Keith Rafferty shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me shall cease at the name of Jesus Christ. God made me the head and not the tail. He'll bless me going in and he'll bless me coming out. My God's alive and he's not dead. Somebody praise his name. Hallelujah. So here's my job today. Here's my mission today. Before you get in this ring and start boxing and putting the gloves on and come out to eye the tiger and to do all these things, I'm going to prepare you before you get there. I'm going to give you some instruction before getting into the ring. Because the churches, excuse me, the churches have become very good about fighting. Hmm. The churches have become enemy to their self. If the church will look around and start using what God has given and quit, hmm, and quit fussing about what we don't have, but what we do have, we'll win. Watch this. I'm going to go ahead and prophesy this. Y'all can say, I don't believe in prophecy. Well, read the Bible. You're wrong. We will get out of debt December the 30th. We will be out of debt. We, hey, Bill, I'm the type of guy, whatever it takes, get her done. We're going to get it done. You got a past in front of you. I rebuke the past. I rebuke everything you went through. We're going through, we're going over, and we're going to get it done. Amen? Somebody better praise him. I don't think y'all believe it. I really don't think y'all believe it this morning. We're going to go through it. Amen? We're not going to stop. We're going to go. Whatever it takes, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Too many people are lost and dying and going to hell to be putting the boxing gloves on and fighting people. Now, I'm going to have a tough word today, but it's going to be a word straight out of the Bible. If y'all can handle truth, say I can. I'm not Ken Freeman, but I, I can preach a little bit like him. He's got highlights, so I like him. So... What do we do before we get into the spiritual fight? What do we do before we get into the ring? Oh, there's a lot of people right now. I see it every Sunday. They're like this. I'll do what I want to do. This is my church. I'll sit where I want to sit. I'll park where I want to park. Booyah. That's my Sunday school class. I'll do what I want to do. I'll teach what I want to teach. Booyah. I'll live the way I want to live. I'll act the way I want to act. I'll talk the way I want to talk. I'll go where I want to go. I'll drink what I want to drink. I'll smoke drugs when I want to smoke drugs. I'll do what I want to do, but I'll get to heaven. No, you won't. I'm busting that lie right now. No, you won't. You will not. Let me tell you something. There's got to be a change in you. How many can testify? There's a change. My chains are gone. I got a new maker in me. He's producing new wine. Hallelujah. The old wine skins are gone. The old brine is gone. But I feel a new thing, a new beginning coming on in my life. So here's what I want to give you real quick. Y'all got to say real quick. Say I doubt it. (laughs) Number one, before you get in this ring, before you get in this ring, you got to know your opponent. Y'all got me? I don't care what y'all say, that was off the chain. (laughs) You got to know your opponent. I'm going to burn this series up, man. I'm telling you, I like it. You got to know your uh, what? (laughs) Round one. Know your opponent. Listen, you might think your battle is with your spouse, 
your employee, your boss, your children, your family, your church. But the reality is, listen to me, listen to this preacher, if they bleed, they're not your enemy. I know this is going totally against church history. I know this is totally going against how you think, but it's so true. We do not battle flesh and blood, but we battle the higher, higher powers, the principalities, the powers of the dark world. Watch this. You're not my enemy. You're not my enemy. You're not my enemy. God, if the church could ever get that truth. My God, if the church could ever get the truth. That I, if you can pinch an inch and you bleed, they're not your enemy. Y'all look at me. They're not your enemy. Get them out of the ring. Quit boxing people. Quit beating people up. Because they don't think like you. Hello? Because they don't act like you. Because they don't talk like you. Because they don't got the same hairstyle. Or because they don't got no hair. See, guys, I'm preaching so much truth to you right now, and it's making some of you mad. You can't even look at me. Man, who's that highlighted 200-pound little whippersnapper thing? He is. I'll tell you who it is. It's coming straight from the Word of God. you got a prideful spirit in you. I told you it's going to get hot in here today. See, I really believe a lot of churches are confused. I really believe a lot of Christians are confused. I really believe a lot of marriages are confused. Man, I really believe that there's just a lot of people here today that's confused. Because you're more concerned about what your neighbor's doing than how many people's lost and dying and going to hell. Anyway. Woo, that boy is burning it up today, Miss Alta. Golly, that boy's preaching, Walker boy. Wow. I'll preach myself happy this morning. It's the truth. Right now, every 60 seconds, three people die and go to hell. You say, Brian, how do you know? Read Matthew 13, Mark chapter 4, and you read the Bible. Every six minutes, there's a rape. It's hard to believe, isn't it? But it's so true. So listen to this. See, your opponent, y'all listen to him and say, I got you. It's Satan. It's Satan. It's Satan. People get mad because people are building the kingdom of God up, Scott. Well, who they, who they think they are. I hope we buy everything north, east, south, and west. I'm so tired of everybody else making everything else and getting this, that, and the other when God says, if I believe it, I can have it. I just think the church should rise up and say, it's mine, amen. Right. It's the truth. Listen to this. I just believe the church has been knocked down for too long. I just believe you've been up against the ropes for too long in your marriage. I just believe you've been punching your wife for too long. I just believe you've been punching your husband for too long. You say, really? Really? I've got people coming to me, husband coming to me and say, man, she smacked me. I'm like, Jesus. What do you do in that case? Run, I guess. I don't know. Listen, I want this to get down your spirit before I go to number two point. Listen, who is your opponent? Come on, I'm going to get in your spirit. Who is your opponent? Satan. Turn to your neighbor and say, Satan is my enemy. Satan. Yeah, now turn to somebody and say, I love you. Come on. You say, I don't even know this dude. You're supposed to love him. You act like you're going out. Of, will, you, will you go on a date with me? You didn't ask him to go out on a date. People come to me all the time and say, I just don't like talking to my neighbor. And I'm like, well, you like talking on the phone. I, I just, I, I can't minister. It's not me. I don't have enough boldness to tell people about Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Yeah, you better. You better get a backbone in your body and stand up and say, you know what? God said this and God said that, and this is how we're going to live. This is what we're going to do. So my question is, who's your opponent? Your wife? 
Some of y'all need to tell your wife you're sorry. Some need, Jimmy's like, I'm sorry. I am so sorry, Allison. I messed up last night. Allison's like, me too, baby. You know? But listen to this. They're not your enemy. Some of us, it took me a long time to get this truth because people would offend me and make me mad. And here's exactly what your preacher would do a long time ago. Listen, here's what I do. I would make sure they're miserable because I'm miserable. I would make sure their life is a living hell because mine was a living hell. Am I preaching? Are are y'all okay? Are y'all breathing out there? Y'all got the word of God in you, deep inside of you? Who's your who's your enemy? Who hates you? Who's stealing from you? Why don't you get mad at him? Yeah. Number two, y'all ready? We're gonna have a bell again. Round two. Here we go. Y'all ready? Number two, before you get in that ring, you just don't have to know who your opponent is. But number two, you have to train. (laughs) Next week, we're going to have a big honking bell. I'm talking, we ring, it's going to go ding, dong. And don't be pointing at me when it says that. Listen to me. You've got to train. Listen, listen to me. If you don't train and prepare yourself, you will be out of breath before you get in the ring. (laughs) If you don't train yourself, you will be out of breath before you get in the ring. You'll waste more time outside of the ring fighting battles that's not your deal. It's not none of your business. It's nothing to you. Stay out of it. Somebody say amen. Amen. Y'all know it's good preaching. That's why I ain't getting no amens. Stay out of it. Yeah. You have to train. You have to train. Listen, you can't wait to fight day to start eating right. <laughs> you can't wait to fight day to start training right. You can't wait to fight day to start go, well, I've been drinking Dyke Mountain Dew. I better quit doing that. You can't wait to fight day to quit eating Krispy Kremes. You can't wait to fight day, the day of the battle, the day of the fight. And every day is that. That's why you got to train every day. That's why you got to read every day. Listen, if all you do is pick your Bible up on Sunday mornings, shame on you. I don't, that means no. That means preach it, preacher. I agree with you, making me mad, but I'm still halfway in it. It's the truth. So listen to me. How do you train with war with the devil. How do you train with war? Number one, you got to study your opponents. You got to study their weaknesses. Now, watch this. This is a good word. What is the devil's weakness? If that is your opponent, that is your enemy, that is who you're fighting, what is his weakness? Come on, I want y'all, this, y'all gonna interact with me. Willie, what is that? Come on. It's the Bible, the Word of God. That is your enemy's weakness, Matt. If you're going to fight the devil, you better not try to stand up with your six foot four inch bad self and try to tear him down with your words. What you got to do is stand on the authority, the word of God. That when that devil comes at you, roaring like a lion, that you can say, oh no. I got the word of God. I'm going to stand on the word of God. Of God. Now, another, another instrument that a lot of people leave out, but we think it's very important at this church, is, is that distracts your enemy and he's weak is worship. Is worship. The praise team ought to say, Hallelujah, he finally said it. It's worship. So when you start worshiping God and lifting holy hands and saying, God, I'm here to worship you, the enemy says, Oh no, he'll start getting in your mind. But I made my mind up, with or without you, I'm going to be the worshiper on my pew. With or without anybody, I'm going to praise him. Till you say, that boy's crazy. He's going to have a heart attack. His ears turn red. His face turns red. Hey, but I love the Lord. I'm not going to sit and do that. I'm going to praise him. I tell you what we're going to do. We're just going to take a 10-second praise break. I don't think we're going to take a 10-second praise break. Until y'all start praising him. You say, Brian, I don't like to praise him. Come on. Come on. Praise him. Come on. Five. Come on. Four. Three. Two. One. Come on. Praise
praise him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me a J. Give me an E. Give me an S. Give me a U. Give me an S. What's the spell? Who died for you? Hey, who's coming back? Give him a praise one more time. Yeah. You say, Brian, boy, y'all are some rowdy bunch of people. Every boxing match, every UFC, every Kentucky, every Louisville game, I see crazy people standing up and rooting for people in spandex. Hey, my God wears a robe dipped in blood. Yeah, he owns the Dallas Cowboys. Hallelujah. Thank God maybe they'll win a few. And I'm a Cowboys fan, so I can say that. I just got in trouble. Y'all lost it all. Know your opponent, and you have to train with the word and with worship. You ought to be a praiser in this church. You shouldn't be a spectator. You ought to be a praiser. You ought to sit there and say, you know what? Above all, I may have had a bad week, but I'm going to praise him anyhow. I don't like how things are going, but I feel something today in my spirit, and I'm going to praise him. I wasn't brought up like that. Well, maybe you should have been. I don't raise hands. The Bible says lift holy hands on design. You dance like you can't dance more, no more. You say, I, I just don't like stuff like that. You're not going to fit in at this church. I'm going to tell you straight up right now, we do not, we do not ask for nothing. We're not going to apologize for the way the Holy Ghost works in this church. We're not going to back down, back off, shut up. We're going to get louder, and we're going to go stand up and raise our hands to God and give Him more praise than ever before. Somebody praise Him. Yeah. I thought about another way that, that the enemy, when he, when he, before I get in the ring... I better have good people in my corner. Write that down. You, I got to have good people in my corner. <laughs> if that boxer don't have somebody in the corner that's rooting him on and cheering him on and say, hey, come back over here. You got your mouthpiece knocked out. Here's a new one. You need somebody in your corner, in your life, that's cheering you on. I want that to get in y'all so bad, so deep right now. Some of you need to change your friends. Some of you need to put a new song in your mouth. I'm talking this. Listen, don't be thinking about somebody else right now. I'm talking to you. Because that's the problem with the church. I know y'all are mad at me. Y'all are so mad at me. Y'all are going, yeah, you wait till next Sunday. There's 10 blue chairs this Sunday. And I'll take five more with me. And then they'll be missing 15 chair blue chairs next Sunday. Watch this. You go ahead. God will replace everybody here with 100 more. I know. Listen, I got this. He preaches mean. He's mean. Because you never got whipped. You always want to be the winner. You, you know, you got, you got stuff in you sitting there going, he's mean. No, it's the truth. It's the truth. See, the problem with the church is, Coach, here's, here's how the church works. Y'all ready for this? Y'all like this. You ready, Coach? Yeah, bring it on. You see, you see her over there? Which one? That one over. She's been at the altar 15 times this Sunday. Blue shirt on? The blue shirt. I've seen her. You've seen her? I don't know why she keeps coming up. Man, I tell you, she needs Jesus. She does? Yeah. Let's go tell her. You think we should? No. I, I, let's, I tell you what, let's just go out to lunch. Okay. And then at lunchtime, let's just let's come up with a game plan. Are you going to pay for it? Uh, yeah, I guess I can. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll let Elkhorn pay for it. How's that? That's fine. With All me. right. But we'll come up with a game plan, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit, and then we'll pray. Will that, will that work? Is that okay? I think we ought to pray about it before we go eat and talk about it. We, may, we need to prepare, because if we're not prepared, we're going to get beat. That's a good word. I guarantee it. All right. You changed my mind. You got to prepare yeah. before the season starts, not wait till the season starts. You prepare before the battle, not in the battle. You prepare before the battle, 
not in the battle. Because when you get in there, it's on like Donkey Kong. When you get in there, you got gloves on. you got a mouthpiece in. You've done everything outside to get you inside. And when you're inside, if you're not prepared outside, you'll lose inside. That's a, I don't know where that come from. Yeah, I do. That's the Lord. I can't say it again, but you better write it down. So listen to me. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, Johnny, the reason why so many people are disturbed on the inside is because they're not prepared on the outside. Maybe the reason why so many churches are dysfunctional today and got to have it their way, I'm telling you, we've been lied to. Burger King lied. You can't have it your way. That's right. Maybe the reason why you're so uneasy right now inside is because you're not prepared mentally outside. Maybe the reason why you're so mad right now and you can't pay attention right now is because of what's going on on the inside of you. But you're paying more attention to the outside stuff, thinking it's going to dictate the inside of your stuff. But really, it's the outside stuff if you don't prepare out here and study out here and read out here and be faithful to God out here. When you get in the ring, the devil will beat you down. So, does this make sense? It's outside what you do out here. It's going to help you when you get inside. You got to train. You got to train for this stuff. So make sure you got good people in your corner. Make sure you got good people in your life that when you mess up, they're not going to sit there and go, my God, Whew, they're calling me again. Watch this. I'm telling you the truth. You need good people in your life that when the devil's coming at you, They'll support you and lift you up and encourage you and say, you know what? He may hit you, but I'm your prop. I'm behind you. I'll push you back up. I'll pull you back up. I'll stand you back up. I'll pray you up, and we're going to go up. Amen? Because I've got good people in my corner. Got good people in my life. You may not like Brian Keith Rafferty, but Brian Keith Rafferty's got good people in his corner. I got the Haywood Reiner in my corner. I got deacons that will put on a boxing glove and box. That's right. The last thing I want to give you, you got to know your opponent. You got to train. And the third thing, if y'all hear, say amen. amen. Are y'all mad? All right, good deal. Ken was right. He said, man, they, 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 like, they like preaching. I said, yeah, they like preaching. They got to highlight it, 200 pounds. Man, I love you. Hey, I love you so much, I want to tell you the truth. What kind of preacher would I be to stand up here and say, guys, y'all doing great. Everything's good. Don't y'all ever change. And y'all just content and keep putting that little money in the offering plate. And every once in a while, if you come to church, that's good. But just, just do the best you can. Booyah. Booyah. It's phony. That's a phony con preacher. It's a lying preacher. Because if a pastor can take out his heart and sit here in front of you guys and say, guys, here's my heartbeat. Here's what's going on with me. I love you enough to get in your grill and tell you the truth of Jesus Christ. And I'd rather you be mad at me and go to heaven and love me and go to hell. I'd much rather tell you truth out of the Bible. That's my goal. That's my mission. That's what I want. I desire. I love you. I want the best out of your life. I want everybody here today to get in that baptistry over there. I want you to baptize the soul. Well, I can't. I'm a woman. Show me one scripture in the Bible where God said a woman could not baptize. Huh? Show, I can show you all kinds of scripture in the Bible where God says I'm no respecter of person. We need to get the women out of the kitchen and get them in the classroom and let them start teaching. It's true. We think the only gifting that women have is to put a pot in their hand and a spoon in the other hand and let them cook supper for us on Sunday night. Women, I'm here to tell you you got a pastor that believes in you. Watch this. Thank God for the women. If it hadn't been for the women, a lot of churches would have closed their doors a long time ago. But the woman stepped up and put the man pants on and said, let's have some church. Man, I'm not done. It's your job as a man 
to train your children, to train your family. If your children come up and ask you, are we going to church today? That's a dead giveaway. You're not a godly man. Oops. I see all kinds of women here today without their husbands. And if you're listening by radio, husbands, shame on you. If you send your wives to church and you don't back them up with the authority of God and sit down beside them in a sanctuary. I think we need to have revival next weekend too. Woo! Yeah, number three, y'all ready? You have to stay focused. That's getting good right there. You have to stay focused. You've got to stay focused. Listen, Satan don't fight fair. How many of y'all notice that? Satan don't care if you smile on Sunday. He wants you mad as hell on Monday. I can see all the religious people now. Oh, my God. He said a nerdy word. In church, hell's in the Bible. There's a lot of cuss words in the Bible. Like when Ken said that cuss word the other day, oh my God, I had three emails. <laughs> it's in the Bible, John chapter 9. You got to quit being religious and start listening to the Spirit of God. <laughs> Listen to the Spirit of God. Be focused. Be focused. I thought about. What a boxer does before he gets in the ring about being focused. Listen to this. Focus means clearing your mind from all distractions. Y'all ready? Clearing your mind from all distractions. You got to block out distractions. Amen? You got to block out the noise of the world. You really do. You got to get away from it. You got to you gotta get it out of, out of out, you got to block it out. Block out your enemy's voice. That's the biggest thing, the biggest battle I fight right now. Y'all watch me as your pastor. God to say, Brian, and when I wrote that letter to you guys, I went through the biggest battle. You can ask Coach. I said, Coach, all they're going to do is think I'm after money. All they're going to do this and all they're going to do that. And Coach squared me. He said, Brian, did God give you that vision? And I said, yes, sir. He said, you don't have to apologize. Amen. You don't have to apologize. Jamie, if God is speaking to you, you watch this. You don't have to get permission from manhood. If I would have listened to man, I would not be your pastor today. Because, Ginger, they told me I'm a divorced man and I can't preach. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. I was an associate pastor, youth pastor. I was on staff. I was getting paid. I preached more than the pastor did, but they wouldn't ordain me. It must have been the highlights. It must have been the highlights. I just wonder what the church is going to do when they stand before God and God says, I called you to do this, but you said no. James, I wonder how the church is going to react when they stand before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And God says, you know what? If a donkey can preach, you can preach. Sometimes I feel like the donkey on Sunday mornings. Here's what we need. We need some attitude in the church. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I don't think so. See, when Satan comes at you and he tells you he's got your babies, he's got your dreams, he's got your vision, he's got everything about you, you look him in the eye and say, I don't think so. I don't think so. Jimmy, I don't think so. When the devil comes at me and says, no, Brian, you can't do that. You will not do that. I'm telling you, devil, I don't think so. Because God says, I've got a plan for you to prosper you. And not to hurt you. And not to harm you. Somebody go ahead and tell the devil now. I believe this is here. Listen, I don't think so. Elkhorn, you can't do it. Huh. You, you're not going to do it. You know why? Because I'm, I'm like the devil and people's lying on y'all and this, that, and the other. We all need to tell him? Oh, I don't think so. I, we are going to do this. See, here's what the Lord spoke unto me. I thought about Jesus Christ, Bobby. I'm about done. Y'all praise me and y'all come. I thought about Jesus Christ. When the, when the Jews got him, 
and they spit on him. They made him pack a cross for almost a mile. Y'all listen to me. And there he was, Jesus Christ, and, and they, they spit on him. They nailed him to a cross. They took a spear, and they put it in his side, and water gushed out. You say, Brian, you believe that? Every bit of it. And I imagine that hell was throwing a party. I imagine hell was saying, oh, we killed him. We put him in a tomb. We rolled a big old rock in front of the tomb. Hey, but I'm glad heaven said, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, 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 no. Here's what, heaven sent an angel down. He rolled the rock away. God stepped out and he said, hey, I don't think so. I don't think so. Hey, I once was dead, but now I'm alive. I don't think so. You can't kill Jesus. I, I know that. I don't think so. I don't think so. So you got to be confident before you get in that ring. Nobody in this church can tell me any different that God is working. Nobody in this church can tell me that 55 souls got saved over the weekend. God is working. Nobody can tell me that 427 souls have been saved since 2008. Ah, God is good. He's so good. September the 23rd. We're having church at the lake, and we're having a baptism service there. All them that got baptized and the ones who got saved, we're going to dip them down at the lake. Is that all right to everybody? Amen. We're going to bring out the old school. And the devil comes at me. He's a liar. Brian, you can't do that. You can't pastor a church over 500. And I'm going to be honest with you. I am humbled, scared to death, too. But y'all help me. You, you minister to me. You allow me to be me. I don't have to be a con preacher. I won't be a con preacher. God's focused in my heart. Write this down. Amos chapter 3. You're like, yes, Beth. I thought about you guys. Praise team. Amos chapter 3, Daniel. There, there was a shepherd boy. Y'all like, yes, Donnie. Write this down. Amos chapter 3. Donnie's a note taker. That's good. Amos chapter 3, watch this, Wilbur. There was a shepherd that was going down the road. And he looked over to his right, Ruthie, and he seen a lion with a lamb sticking out of his mouth. And I said, I was like, whoa, this is going to be good, you know. That was awesome. And all of a sudden, the shepherd said these words. He said, all I seen was a leg and an ear hanging out of the lion's mouth. A leg and an ear. A leg and an ear hanging out of the lion's mouth. That shepherd, he, he started distracting the lion. He ran over there while he was distracting the lion and grabbed the leg of the lamb. This is good. <laughs> I'm pumped up. <laughs> he grabbed the lamb's leg and he pulled the lamb out of the lion's mouth. And he saved the lamb from the lion's mouth because he was not afraid to get into the ring. Here's what God told me. If Elkhorn Baptist, I want somebody to write this down. If Elkhorn Baptist Church will give me their ear, I will give them a leg to stand on. Yeah. Write it down. I, you may be in the, the mouth of a lion this morning. There may only be pieces of you hanging out. But God spoke unto this pastor. If the devil's got 99.9 .9 of you, I'll take what's left over. Stand you up, put you up, prop you up, and make you holy in this house. Got to do it. Got to do it. Give God your ear, and he'll give you a leg to stand on. Amos chapter 3. Give God your ear, he'll give you a leg to stand on, Judy. <laughs> Sheila, give God your That's ears, right. he'll right. give you a leg to stand on. All my guests in the house, raise your hand right now. Come on, if you're a guest in here, raise your hand. Come on, listen to me. Give God your ear, and he'll give you a leg to stand on. You got to know your opponent. Who's your opponent? Your wife? Your husband? Your prodigal children? Your crazy pastor? What y'all quit quiet for? No, listen. Satan... 
is your enemy. Satan is your enemy. I'm going to say it again. Satan is your enemy. Before you get in this ring, you better know your opponent. You better train. And you better be focused. Next week, here's what we're going to talk about. Bring a guest with you, all right? Next week, we're going to get in the ring. The gloves will be on next week. You don't want to miss next week because guess what? I ain't going to tell you, so come. That's the only way I'll get you here. No, I'm joking. I believe it could be storming like it's raining right now. I believe it could be a snowstorm. And I believe some of you are so consumed with God, you'd say, no storm, no devil, no rain, no problem. Nothing's going to get between me and my Lord today. I come today to declare I will worship Him in season and out of season. I will rise up and call His name blessed. I know my opponent is Satan. Satan wants you to hit your alarm clock five times and stay at home. I just wonder how many battles, Dixie, he won today. He didn't win you, did he? How many of you glad that today you showed up? How many of you glad today that God's got a plan? God's got a purpose. He's still in the saving business. Amen? Won't you stand to your feet, guys? I really believe this is a word for everybody in this house. Some of you may be battling the wrong person, the wrong people. Some of you are distracted. Some of you have been fighting in your own strength. That's why you are tired. That's why you're tired. Watch this. People ask me all the time, I say, Brian, how in the world do you keep up with all them people? I'm like, I don't. I don't. They get mad at you all the time. I don't. I gave this church to God a long time ago. I'm just his mouthpiece today. I just love the Lord like you do. But I'm telling you, if you listen to this preacher, some of you are battling and fighting a fight. Watch this. Y'all ready? Say, I'm ready. That you was never intended to fight. Some people call Bible study, going to Bible study and, and gossiping. That is not Bible study. The Lord spoke into my heart a long time ago. If you would pray for people as much as you talk about them, there would be less problems in this world. All right, church. How many did you get the word today? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jamie, did you get the word today? No, you're what? Your opponent. You got to what? Courtney, what do you got to do next? You got to what? Train. And then what do you got to do? Stay what? Focused. If he would pay attention to the line, he'd have never saved the lamb. If you pay attention to all this other stuff, Lord, I love that rain. God's so good. Like I said, going, I, I can't hear. Move up. Move up. And you can hear. Might get spit on too. It's holy spit though, amen? I love you. Who's your enemy? Satan. Remember that when y'all leave and you go to Fiesta and you don't get your food in time. Satan. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, be glorified in this house. I love you. I praise you. I thank you, God, for who you are. Satan, I get the advantage and the news to deliver to you today. You are defeated. You're a liar. The war has been won. So, God, I praise you in this house today because I am a winner. Hallelujah. I will win. I have won. So, God, I thank you for what you're doing. Be glorified. Be blessed. And I praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all be honest today and say this word? Say, Brian, I've been fighting the wrong, wrong person. Brian, I, I've been fighting the wrong person. Come on. Listen. Quit lying. 
We come to church and lie more church than we do outside. You need to come. You need to get it right today. You need to get it right before you get in the ring. Get it right before you get in the ring. Some of you may need to go to somebody and say, hey, listen. Y'all watch. People don't like this. This is good, though. Man, I've been talking about you. Boy, that's a bold Christian, isn't it? I've been talking about you. My heart's not right. And I want you to know today, you're not my opponent. Y'all got me? Come on, I love y'all. Don't y'all don't go down on me. I know it's been a long service. I told you it would, would be before you I even started, so don't. Sorry. You've been talking about the wrong people. If you would get as mad at the devil as you did people, the devil would have a full-time job. Here's what the devil does, James. You ready for this? He'll go plant lies in a church. Somebody will believe the lie. They'll go to somebody else and to believe the lie. And next thing you know, you got a gossip meal in the church that's based off of a lie of the enemy. Stop that today. Y'all watch me. Stop that today. Well, you just hear your pastor's heart. Stop that today. Stop that today. Who's your opponent? Satan. You got to what? Train. And you got to stay focused. If you do that, next week you'll be ready to get in this ring. But until you get that right, here's what you'll do. You'll go in the ring with that person that you got that odd against. And you'll be latched to them. And trying to fight the enemy with them one arm. It don't work like that. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, do your thing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. You say, Brian, I'm waiting for you to be quiet. It's not going to happen. Come on. Come on. It's not going to happen. Come on. I I've been fighting the wrong person. When the music I've, got, I've got an ought in my heart. I can't move on. The reason why you can't move on is because the past has you right where it wants you. I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I'm preaching so good. It's not even funny. It's so good. Hey, I'm going to fight the good fight today. I'm going to go to the enemy's camp. And I'm going to rob that joker with my blessings. He ain't getting me no more. Jennifer, he ain't getting me no more. Come on. You can't tell me. I've seen your hands go up. Come on. If you're fighting blood, you're fighting the wrong person. Come on. Come on. It'll set you free. How many of y'all want to be free? Come on. Just come on. I'm telling you, come on. Come on. Six people here is more than that. Come on, God. Get in their spirit. Get in their heart. Come on. I'm coming back. Come on. And it's all about you. You've been fighting the wrong thing. It's all about you. You've Jesus. been in the ring with the person I'm sorry, and not the devil. Lord, for the thing Come on. I've made. Come on. When it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Come on, guys. God may be staring in you right now. You feel it. Man, you feel it? Come on, don't, don't you let the devil keep you in that chair today. You confront that King devil so you can get in the ring. Words, come on, you no come on. No one could express how come on. much you deserve. Come on, you got to know your opponent. Know your opponent. No one we can I'm poor. Come on. Lord, all I have is yours. Come on. Every single breath and I'll bring you more than a song Cause the song in itself on, Is not what you have required That's right You search much deeper within on, Through the way things appear You're looking into my Got your heart. Come on. I'm coming Come on. back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. Come on. It's all about you, Jesus. 
Hey, you know what would make us a better church? To be a forgiving church. To be a forgiving church. You know what would make you have a better marriage, Kurt? To have a forgiving marriage. So truth. We waste more time. The devil's, he's like right now. How many know the devil's lying to you right now? Good gracious. I'm telling you, if you want a better marriage, have a forgiven marriage. Watch this, y'all ready? Keep a short list. Keep a short list. In other words, quit. Watch this. First, first Corinthians chapter 13. It says, keep no records of wrong. Boy, that just whipped my butt. I might go tell Dana I'm sorry. Keep a short list. Don't be keeping record. Well, how many of y'all know people? This is great. Man, you go to them and tell them you're sorry, and they all of a sudden say, Well, I remember when you did this. You remember when you did that. Well, Lord, you just did this and did that, and blah, blah, blah. I'm dinky, 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 blanky, blanky, blanky. And you're like, Man, what in the world's going on? So when someone comes up and tells you they're sorry, watch this, y'all ready? I forgive you. Y'all got me? I forgive you. I forgive you. Let me remind you. No, I forgive you. I talked about you. I forgive you. I'm sorry. I forgive you. That's just in my heart today. That's in my heart today. Keep a short list. Know who your opponent is. His name is Satan. He's the devil. It's not your wife. It's not your husband. It's not your Sunday school teacher. It's not your GA leader or your RA leader or your preacher. Amen, Brother Brian. That's good. It's not the person sitting beside you, Lord. I can't see y'all two ever getting mad at each other anyway. Lord, y'all act just the same. You, you do the same. Y'all have fun together. And I've learned from you. Jim and Joan, let me ask y'all a question. 40, how many years? 46 years. Joan, God bless you. Yeah, put up with a lot. Be honest. How'd y'all make it 46 years? <laughs> he said a lot of compromising, <laughs> you know? A lot of praying and a lot of compromising. Man, watch this. I'll help you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My fault. I, got, I listened to Ken this week, and he said I got in the car, Wes. Guess, guess where the gas hand was at? Empty! And George automatically, I said, it's my fault. <laughs> my fault. Listen, guys, I love you. Short list. you got to compromise a little bit every once in a while. You ain't always right. Good gracious. I'm preaching. I'm really preaching. Trying to help you. But it's going like this. So, man, let me ask you a question. What's it going to take to get your wife at that altar today and say these words? Hey, I'm going to compromise. We're going to meet in the middle. And we're going to have a hot semen rocking marriage. Tom loves that. <laughs> 